Hey guys, I am back. Sorry, the lighting was kind of weird for me. I couldn't really see uh, what I was doing. Um, let me just um, play with... Uh, is that okay like that? Can I sit like that? Last week I kind of got a little bit uncomfortable at one point. I'm going to move this. By the way, guys, one day soon, a couple of months, we are going to have a um, full-on studio thing being built for me for these for doing these things like podcasts and all sorts and I cannot wait for that because I'm going to have my own space um I'll wait for a few of you to arrive um I, I hope you've had a good day I am um yeah hey how are you guys doing um yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm getting a um, a office space made for me, uh, so I don't have to be in my bed. <laughs> I made these podcasts in my bed at the moment. <clears throat> it's not exactly the ITV studios, that's for sure. It's uh, it's my bed, um, but hey, that's how we roll. And um, yeah. I hope you guys are well. How are you guys all doing? It'd be nice to hear from you. Who's who's on? Who's live? Let's say hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let's say hello. Say hello, say hello. Um I'm gonna just get I'm just gonna get cracking. I'll get straight to it. Um there are three things that I really want to cover here that relate to mental well being in relation to meditation. Now as you all know, if you've been following my stuff for a while, you'll know that I'm a big advocate of meditation. And the reason why is because when you focus your attention on your breathing, what it does is help you realize that your thoughts are just thoughts and they're not evil or sinister or out to get you, or true, even. Do you know, honestly, my friends, if I believed every thought that I ever had, I would feel fucking insane. I'd feel like an absolute weirdo. I really would. Oh, my good God. Um, you wouldn't believe the kind of thoughts I have um, in one day. And yet I'm able to remain inc incredibly sane and well and happy. And the reason for that is I meditate because when I've done my meditation, I'm able to go, okay, that's not me. I am not my thinking. I am me. And who I am is a natural being. A natural being like a dog or a tree or anything that's natural is just is. It just is in the moment. It just observes. And when I extract my personality from the situation and remember that my natural self my being this thing that observes the world when i come into that place through meditation um i know that when i have a thought like a really fucking strange thought about like an insecurity or a worry or something about myself the way i see myself all these things they're not me none of them are me they're just thoughts and it's so important that you firstly meditate i think it's just fucking meditate like seriously get that in but also we remember we are not our thoughts and you my friend you are not what you think about you gotta really really remember that and this is not some woo woo idea like you are love you are spiritual isn't it this is not that it's far more hands-on than that for me it's that when you're having something going on in here in your head this 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 thing this this organism producing thoughts over and over and over is not something that you necessarily have control over and because you don't have control over those thoughts where they come from why they come up i mean we could we could deliberate for for hours, why does that thought come up? Why does that one come up? Why, why am I thinking this way? Why am I feeling that way? We'll never find the answer. But all we can do is kind of just notice it and go, okay, 
of having that thought. And just by noticing that you're having a thought, poof, it evaporates. Because when you notice what you notice and you notice your thinking, you can go, oh, wow, I am over here and my thoughts are over there. And when you create that space between you who's seeing your thoughts, this is you, you are the observer and you're able to just see them it's 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 um it can be for a lot of people the biggest shift in mental emotional spiritual well-being they ever have and ever will have because if tell me that i'm wrong but dealing with our own thoughts and dealing with worrying thoughts and dealing with like painful pictures and all these things that we have inside our head, dealing with that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't we say that's probably the number one stressor in 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 our lives? Is that is that true? I don't know. For me personally, it is. I would say that I can probably bring every single one of my stresses down to the way that I think about it. And so, therefore, if I can change the way I think about things. I reduce, if not sometimes eliminate stress. So that's just a, a thing that I want to talk about. It's just to kick off this thing about if you're fairly new to meditation, I want you to really just take on board these words. And is to say that if you can every morning take deep breaths and just notice those breaths and every time your mind wanders off, bring your attention back to your breath. If you can do that every single morning, you're going to create that space between your thinking, which is all over here, and you, which is down here, able to observe and see that. And in creating that space, you get to realise that you don't have to cling to thoughts. Even if you've had a really weird or worrying thought go through your head, you don't have to feel shame for it. You don't have to feel embarrassed about it. You don't have to question your worth as a human being. Because, listen, my friends, if I really started delving into some of the thoughts that I have about myself and about other people and about things sometimes, I would, I would, feel, I would think I'm a terrible human being. I would think I'm a, a horrible human being at times. But the point of the matter is, is that I don't necessarily have control over my thoughts. They poof, they pop in like this. The, the beginning bit of the thought, the, the, when it just goes in, like doof, comes inside. We don't have control over this bit. All we have control over is the middle bit of the thought. And then how we want it to exit. But we can't necessarily get rid of it and we can't necessarily stop it coming in. But what we can do is just step back from trying to fight with it. And when we step back from trying to fight with it, we're like, Fuck, man. I do not have to be my thinking. And it can be, like I said just a minute ago, it can be the biggest release and shift in a human being. Can we expect ourselves to be in that observant state all day long where we just notice our thinking and we're just perfectly able to allow the thoughts to enter and drift through and leave? You know, Is it realistic to expect that we're going to be able to do that all day no i don't think so i think perfect bliss is a bit of a myth and i think the more we try and aim for perfect bliss and perfect mental health i feel as if the more angst stress and discomfort we actually end up causing for ourselves what i believe is far more powerful is kind of allowing ourselves to slip allowing ourselves to get it wrong from time to time allowing ourselves to have a shitty thought, buy into it, get turned turned upside down by it, and really, you know, because this happens. This is life. Like sometimes when we're not being mindful and we're and we're having certain thought patterns going on, um, and we're tired, particularly when we're tired, that we um, we can let our thoughts affect us. However, the question always becomes: Can I? Can you? I want you to ask yourself this right now: Can you? honestly say that you are trying to become better 
It's a yes or no. And if you are, then you probably are getting better. And there will be days where you feel as if your mental health isn't getting better. And I understand that. I really do. I feel like that sometimes. I feel like, like, where's this mental health I'm supposed to be getting from all this extra work that I'm doing? But the point about it is, for me, those moments last very, 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 very short amount of time now compared to where I was years ago where I used to really cling to thoughts, cling to them, buy into them, overthink them, go and go and go and go. Whereas now I can slip and I do fuck up like fucking hell. I would hate to ever be the person that's like, do this, do that and never be honest. I'm, 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 I'm just as vulnerable as anyone. But that when I have fucked up, I can notice it much more quickly. That's what I'm trying to say here. And with meditation, you get to notice your fuck ups way faster so it's not to say that meditation is going to give you perfect mental health it won't that's impossible i think but it will improve it dramatically to a level where you you notice that it doesn't affect you anywhere near as much as it used to in the past um and here's what's funny about humans and, and i'll be the first to admit that i do this when when i'm going through an incredibly clean uh, or calm sea of my mind and I'm just on a great run. Like I can sometimes go three, four weeks without a single negative thought. I've just been on this great run of just like positive and bliss and just amazingness. And these things do happen. They're happy accidents of of of, of very disciplined meditation practice, of good nutrition, of, of getting sleep like eight, nine hours a night. And we can get these great runs going. The The point of the matter is I get that great run going and then there are little moments like when, when that run ends, when I start to go, oh, well, if everything's really, really good right now, how am I going to keep that going? <laughs> this, is, this is how fucked up my mind is. This is how stupid my mind is. It's like everything's going really, 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 really well. Like career's amazing. My relationship with Al is fucking awesome. I'm getting to go surfing. My body is in the shape of its life. Like I've never felt so good. And then because everything's really, really good. I, I go, fuck. How am I going to, how am I going to keep this going now? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of success. Like, how am I going to maintain this? Like I've got all these people who are asking me questions now and I've got, uh, you know, things I want to achieve, but how am I going to do those? And I, so I start to do that and it's so silly. It's so crazy. It's just a thought. And, and, and no sooner has it started to happen and I've been affected by it, then I can just go, Ah, uh, yeah. That's just a thought. And it's there. It's entered. I didn't control that. I couldn't control that. It's gone. It's gone in. We can't control. You can't expect yourself to control every single thought that you have in a day. That is fucking impossible. What you can do is learn to get better. And when we learn to get better, we have these thoughts. They come in. We don't know where they come from. I don't even know what a thought is. What the fuck is a thought? Your scientists have been trying to uncover that for 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 years we don't even know what these things are but they go in and all you can do is control this bit you can't necessarily control this bit when it's going to leave you can't necessarily control it coming in but what you can do is this bit and this bit here is where you just go oh yeah there it is there it is there's the thought because i want you to do something for me right now if you ever try to get rid of negative thinking um, it, it, here's why it causes more harm because let me just have a sip of water my friends thirsty thirsty. I've been thirsty today I feel like I've drunk a lot of water but I just keep needing more um, is is if you just see, see, I don't know if, if I can put you between my legs oh, I'm going to say this now can I put you between my legs and a biddy is going to come jumping in with all kinds of comments. Right, so look, I'm going to put you between my legs and I'm just going to show you something with my hands. Now, with my hands here, okay, um, I want you to do this right now. So can you put your phone down for me? And I want you to just observe this analogy. I want you to put your phone down and have me in view if you can. You got that, guys? And then from there, put your hands together. Okay? Just do that for me now. And I want you to push your hands together. Okay? Are you doing that for me now? 
This represents mental well-being. In a nutshell, literally. Not literally, we're not in a nutshell. Like, I'm in my bedroom, you're probably at home. Like, we're not in a nutshell, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm being silly. Push your hands together like this, right? Pushing, pushing, pushing. Now push more with the right than the left. Okay? So push more with the right than the left. Does does the left, I'm going to ask you this question, does the left automatically resist? You're about to, if you didn't say yes, then I'm going to be like, you're a liar. Because what happens is the left automatically resists. If you're, if you're, and the point about that analogy is, if you try to force this bit, so the thought goes in, we can't control this. Thoughts happen. We can control this. If we try to get rid of them, like go away, go away, I don't want this thought, think happy thoughts, think happy thoughts. When we try to do that, force is met with more force and the resistance continues. And like, and this is my favorite quote with mental well-being from Eckhart Tolle, which is, um, whatever you resist persists and whatever you fight, you strengthen. So if you ever try to use happy thinking when you're having sad thinking or worrying thinking or whatever's going on, you're going to make the worrying thinking and the sad thinking 10 times worse. So it's why pretending to be happy can make people so unhappy because we create a distrust within that says, I'm not allowed to have this thought. And if I'm not allowed to have this thought, then it must be a bad thought. Therefore, if it's bad, we need to get rid of it. And if we need to get rid of it, then having it inside of me is not a good thing. And that not good thing makes things worse. Whereas if we accept the thought and invite it in, almost just say, hey, old buddy, old pal, old buddy. I have one um, that I have from, from years ago. It's an anxiety thought. And it's just so weird. It's just, it's like, it's just the most random thought about my health. Of, and I can't control it. But it comes in, and now when it comes in, through meditation practice, because that's really the only way I believe that we can really develop genuine, high-quality mental well-being. The practice through the practice of, of, of meditation, I've been I've been meditating every day for for almost a year now. Because of that, I'm able to have the anxious thought come in my head, and I'm just able to go, oh, that's there. Come in, my friend, and I almost like welcome it in now. Because it, 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 it's, it's not to be judged. It's just that thought. It's just that worrying thought. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It just it comes in. I just, oh, there you are. And I crack on with my day. I do what I do and, and then it leaves. But the point about suffering, when people go through what we might call depression or anxiety, now, although they're very complicated matters, really they can be boiled down to one simple truth, which is that, they are persistently, anyone who is persistently depressed or persistently anxious, they are persistently trying to get back to happiness. And this is what we mustn't do, because if we try and try and try and get back to feeling good, the trying makes us feel worse. So we've got to relinquish control and surrender and just let it be in there. Let the thought be there. And it will pass. It's like my um, it's it's like my analogy for um, the uh, the mouse up the stairs, which is whatever kind of worrying or or, 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 or different indifferent thinking you might have been having recently. Just remember that, like a mouse that comes up the staircase, like you know in those movies where where a little mouse comes up the staircase. Up the staircase, up the staircase, up the staircase. And the girl's in the bedroom going, oh, oh no, oh. And she's watching this this big shadow, this big silhouette of this mouse coming up the stairs. Up the stairs, up the stairs. And then once the mouse, she's going, oh, like this. And then once the mouse just walks in to the little, little girl's bedroom, she looks at the mouse and goes, oh, you're just a mouse. Just a little mouse. You're not a monster. This 
is what happens when you shine the light of awareness on thoughts. When you shine the light of awareness on thought, on thoughts in general, about stuff, things that you're dealing with in your mind, when you shine the light of awareness upon them, all the fear that was associated with them disappears. Because you can see it for what it really is, which is just a gentle passing thought. It doesn't have to be judged. It is just what it is, and it will pass. And it's that calmness. Now, the way that you link the awareness to the ability to let it pass is the breathing. Because if you just observe your thinking, you know, the thought goes in, we can't control this. If you just then observe it without doing the breathing, it's very, very, very difficult. So there has to be a body-mind connection to allow awareness to really take a hold and to get all that benefit of, of, of allowing it to pass. And that's just, if you ever have this experience in the day, my friend, if you ever have an experience where you are feeling just really uptight or tense or stressed or unwell or down or anything, just pause. Bang. Just pause for a moment and just and observe. Observe your thoughts, observe your breath and you'll instantly get that perspective. And that perspective will help you realise that the wisdom in this quote, which is that just because you have had a thought It doesn't make it true. Moving on, my friends. Moving on. I I just wanted to start today with mental well-being and really discuss it with you. And I think it's really important and very open about it. I'm very open about my um, challenges in mental well-being. I think that is so important. I think that we hide behind the veil of, I've got it completely sewn up. It's all perfect. Everything's fine. And there's no issues. It's like, nah, nah, that's fucking bullshit. That's sorry. That's I'm not buying that. Um, we're all in this game together. I want you to know that I am 100% with you, behind you. Um, I empathise with you. Being being a human being is being a human being. We are individually on this ride, and there is resistance sometimes. And uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that and be real. And I think in being real, we can create more human to human connections. This is what a lot of people are missing out on. Um, let's do some book readings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some mindset book readings from books that I just really like. And what I, what I mean by mindset books is they're very positive. They're very much about how to, um, yeah, have more happiness, how to achieve more, how to have more success, all these kinds of things, more well-being. I'm going to talk to you um, first from... Let me see how I can do this. Um, let me... Oh, my friends. Let me adjust. Now, all the men, right, who are listening to this video right now, or this podcast, because this will be on iTunes soon, will have empathized with that because I was crushing my balls. Anyway, moving on. Um, moving on. Um, it's it's getting a bit... It's getting open, isn't it? It's getting... I'm, it's, the, the poo stories, the talking about the balls, the... What did you think of that question yesterday? The uh, the question, snogging your dog. Snogging a dog for 30 seconds or standing on Lego? If you had to do one of the two. If there was a gun at your head and someone was saying you have to do one. For me, it was always like, always the Lego, even though that's the most painful thing in the whole world. There's no way I'd snog a dog. And like a lot of you said, they lick their asshole. Like, how how is it we're supposed to... You know, we've got a gun to our head. Someone's saying you've got to, you've got to either kiss this dog or stand on Lego. How could, how could we, how could we snog the dog when they've licked their butt? Like, I don't get that. This is an extract from Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. Now I know that's backwards. Um, a lot of you have pointed that out in the past, but there you go. Done is better than good. The only reason I was able to persist in completing my first novel was that I allowed it to be stupendously imperfect. I pushed myself to continue writing it, even though I strongly disapproved of what I was producing. Let me just sit up. I'm finding this position a little tricky. Let me just sit like this. There we go. Let me sit up. How about that? 
Are we good, guys? That book was far from perfect. It made me nuts. I remember pacing around in my room during the years that I worked on the novel, trying to gin up the courage to return to that lackluster manuscript every single day, despite its awfulness, reminding myself of this vow. I never promised the universe that I'd be a great writer. God damn it. I just promised the universe that I would be a writer. At 75 pages in, I nearly stopped. It felt too terrible to continue, too deeply embarrassing. But I pushed through with my... I pushed through my own shame only because I decided that refusing to go to my grave with 75 pages of an unfinished manuscript sitting at my desk drawer, I did not want to be that person. The world is filled with too many unfinished manuscripts as as it is, and I didn't want to add another one to that bottomless pile. So no matter how much I thought my words stank, I had to persist. It's a it's a little extract about persistence, isn't it? I think that like we all have dreams, um, we all have ambitions. Um, even if some of those ambitions are just to maintain the life that you lead now, it doesn't have to be um, this big grandeur of you know writing books and creating dream businesses and giving back and blogs and da da da. It doesn't have to be this creative journey. It's just to say that we all have dreams and. If we want those dreams to come true, we must show up, show up and, and, and persist and be consistent and allow for imperfections. Allow us to, to allow ourselves to. What am I trying to say? Allow ourselves to get it wrong. Because when we allow ourselves to get it wrong, it says something very powerful about us and this is how i see it it says that we are willing to show up despite what might happen from us showing up and if we're willing to do that it says to our psyche that i'm with you i care about you and i trust you because it ends up not being about what people think like if we make it about what people think our journey we're forever going to be second guessing what we're doing. But if we make it just about us and about our spiritual, emotional, physical, creative and goal related well-being and growth. We start to realize that it really is just about us. It really is just about how we feel. And no matter whether we fail or succeed, it's just a, a journey of growth. It's an internal journey. It's a journey that takes place on the inside. And it's not to say that we don't want our dreams to come true. Of course we do. Of course we do. You are someone, I'm sure, sitting here right now listening to this, who has dreams. You have things that you want. You have things you want to maintain, things you want to let go of, things you want to get rid of. They're all dreams. They're all goals. Whether you want rid of stuff or that you want stuff. You know, if you want rid of joint pain, that's a dream. Because what you do want is to be joint mobile. More mobile in your joints. If you even, let's say, want rid of financial insecurity, therefore you do want something because obviously you want to be abundantly wealthy in that way. So no matter what life we're leading, we all have goals whether or not we think about it because ultimately we can all have a little think to ourselves right now. Like, I want you to do this right now and think, you know, are there things you're focusing on that you don't want? Because if there are, then immediately you have goals. Because if you flip it and reframe it, 